morning, we learned this mind-bending new idea that not only can we think of complex numbers as points, which is crazy enough, but if they're points in a 2D space, now we don't just need to think about them, or we're not just limited to thinking about them, in terms of horizontal vertical. We can also talk about them in terms of their distance from the origin, and the angle they form with the positive real axis. So that was the modulus and the argument, respectively. Okay? So we have a new way of writing our complex numbers. Now, to help you understand why this is not just an oddity like, oh, okay, that's cool, you can do it like this if you want to, right? Why is it actually really, really valuable and, um, and elegant, okay? I want us to go back to this. We looked at this um, a little while ago when we were first trying to wrap our heads around what on earth does multiplication mean in the context of complex numbers, right? And so what we determined was, based on this example, which is where we started, um, is that it was, um, it was multiplication equaling rotation, okay? Now what I want us to do is to try and think about this. I want it. Yes, I did. It's, I lost like 90% of my, anyway. Um, it was his appointment that he had to Hey, people who weren't. Anyway, I want us to take this old example and just look through it with the lens of modulus argument form to see what kinds of insights it will yield for us, okay? So let's just quickly rehearse. If we start with Z1 being right here on the real axis, okay? Uh, let's do the multiplication again and get our four, our four points, okay? So Z2... If I multiply by i, 1 times i is? Just, just 1 lot of i, right? Wow, it's that late on a Friday afternoon, okay? It's just i. Multiply z2 by i again, and that gives you? Negative 1. So that's over here. That's purely real. So I'm back on the real axis. And then our last time, if you go multiply by i one more time, that's when you get negative i, okay? All right, now... We know this in terms of, this is all in um, Cartesian form, as it were, x plus i, y. Let's get it. Let's read off what these points are in terms of modulus and argument. Okay, let's start with z1. z1 is equal to, now, because these are all the same distance, right? The, the modulus for this particular example was very easy. What's the modulus? One. It's just one, like distance from the origin which in this case is just one. So I'm just gonna write down the one even though it's, it's slightly redundant but it'll be more helpful to us later, okay? And then what comes in the brackets? What corresponds to x plus i, y? I'm gonna pull up my trig functions, right? It'll be cos theta plus i sine theta. Now what's theta in this case, in the case of z1? Zero. It's zero, right, I'm on the real axis. Sorry, I should say, I'm on the positive real axis, right? So I don't need to go anywhere to measure my angle, all right? So all right, cos zero plus i sine zero. Okay, you happy with that? All right, now just before I move off, right, like obviously this is true because cos zero is one and sine zero is zero. So the, the imaginary component is zero. There's the real component I already knew about, okay? Um, as we've noticed already as well, just as a side note, this is not the only way to write this in mod arg form. What's another argument I could choose that would give me the same point? It's another angle. I could go all the way around. I could go 360 degrees or better in our context, 2 pi, right? So this could be cos 2 pi plus i sine 2 pi. I'm not going to write that though because it's not the principal argument. Okay, so this is a better way to write it. Minus pi to pi, is that what you're thinking of? Yeah, sorry. So, sorry, so yeah, comment. so I can, I can write it in however way I like. I can go cos 2 pi plus i sine 2 pi. Yes. I can go cos 4 pi plus i sine 4 pi, but they're not very helpful ways to write it. And I can write it in a more concise way using the principal argument. Okay? okay. All right, let's cut back up here, okay? Let's go to Z2, right? Yeah. Now, again, we've chosen an easy example. What's the modulus? Uh, one. One, still one, okay? Uh, what angle am I? From the positive real axis, 90 degrees, which is pi on 2 radians, okay? So I've got cos pi on 2 plus i sine pi on 2, okay? Now, by the way, just to save ourselves a little bit of trouble, and so I don't keep asking you this, okay? Um, 
the modulus for every single one of these particular points, they're all one, okay? The plural of modulus is moduli, okay? Just like, um, what's it, like radius and radii, okay? Not radiuses. So, the moduli for all of these are one, so I'm just going to save myself a bit of time, and I'm going to write that, I'm going to write that space, but anyway. I'm going to write that for all of these other ones, all right? Okay, uh, did you have a question, or, yeah? And now if we go all the way from here and measure across our angle, what's our argument for Z3? What is arg of Z3? I've got to go all the way around, 180 degrees or pi radians, okay? So I'm going to get cos pi plus i sine pi, okay? Now again, we can verify this by what we know of trig, yeah? Because cos pi... That's halfway along the cos curve, right? Halfway along. So you start at 1 and you come down to negative 1. Right? What about the imaginary part? What's sine pi? It's 0 because, again, it's halfway along the sine curve. And halfway is, bam, at 0. Okay? So that works. Last one, be careful because I want to try and preserve the principal argument here. Minus pi. It's going to be cos minus pi on 2, because I'm going, I'm going to go measure this way, which is negative. So you okay. can't like write 3 on 2 pi. Okay, now, I am going to write it, okay? Uh, I'm going to write both for this particular example, because it's actually very useful to me. I'm going to write it, but I hope you can see, cos 3 pi on 2 plus i sine 3 pi on 2. These are the same complex number, but only the first one uses the principal argument. So this one is generally preferred. Okay, now let's think about this, right? Imagine now that you don't know this black representation. You don't know that you can write it as 1 or i or minus 1, etc. All you know is this blue mod arg form, okay? How would you describe what operation is getting you from one number to the next, okay? For instance, the moduli, they're all staying the same. So nothing interesting is happening there, okay? That's fine. What about the arguments? What about the angles? What's happening each time? It's increasing by pi on 2. That's right. Uh, I mean, we noticed this before. It's rotation, right? But from here to here, I add pi on 2. From here to here, I add pi on 2. And from here to here, I add pi on 2. Oh, yeah. Um, just so that we have an unambiguous form. That's all, really. Yeah. Um, because otherwise it's like, well, which, which way would you like to write the number, you know? We, we weird out, we famously weird out if we have different representations for the same number, you know? It just, it just doesn't fit with us, right? We want to have things that are unambiguous, right? So this is a way of trying to get to us. Alright, so, just to rewind, right? As I transition around the circle, as I rotate, this way, the moduli are staying the same, but the angles are adding and adding and adding. Are you okay with that idea? Yeah. 